against the Bulldogs. It was 14-14 at the end of regulation, but BYU won it 28-21. The Cougars also came here way back in 2001 and knocked off Mississippi State 41-38 in that contest. But a nice little interesting home-and-home -home matchup between Mississippi State and BYU. Mississippi State won the toss, by the way. They defer, so BYU will get the football first to start this one. Offensively, they have had their issues, averaging just 11 points a game, 126 to the country. And this kick will sail five yards deep. And the Cougars will have it at the 25. We talk about offensive struggles. You can point to the quarterback position. They have used four guys to throw from the quarterback position, not including the Wildcat. Bo Hodge has started four or five games. Mangum has been banged up. Coy Detmer got a little work as well. And Joe Critchlow, who is a true freshman from Nashville area, even got in some plays last week. they got to get settled at this spot, and Tanner Mangum is the guy they hope can do that. And he's going to be a little bit limited today. They're going to call plays around his deficiency. He's got a lower leg issue, an ankle problem. It'll be interesting to see the play calling, especially if they get into obvious passing downs, what kind of offense they're going to try to run on a third and medium. So on a first down and 10 to start the game offensively for the Cougars. They'll go with the fullback, Bakri. He'll pick up nine as you take a look at today's starting lineups brought to you by Bass. Pro shops. And you know, we are hit on the quarterback position, but really, who's he going to be looking towards? Tanner Mangum's going to look for Matt Bushman. He's gotten more targets than any other receiver in this BYU offense, and he has become the security blanket of sorts at his tight end position. They'll come near side. Pass is caught and close to the first down. Tola Tua with the reception. Des Harris will push him out of bounds. Take a look at Mississippi State defensively. And I tell you what, 94 up front. Keep an eye on him. He can be a game changer. Well, you look at the SEC statistics and tackles, and Jeffrey Simmons is the second most tackles of any defensive lineman in the conference. He's incredibly active. You don't see a lot of nose guards getting this much action. He covers down well. He moves the pocket and will collapse the line of scrimmage inside out. Colo Tau with the carry, hit right at the line of scrimmage. Needed to get over the 35. I think they'll give him the first down. Braxton Hoyette making the play for Mississippi State, but a fresh set of downs. And, you know, we talk about run game. Every coach wants to say they want to establish the run game, but I think it is of utmost importance for BYU today. Well, given some of the limitations that they anticipate having at the quarterback spot right now with Tanner Mangum, they want to make sure that they can protect him. So far, we've seen a quick, easy throw, runs on the ground, a nice conversion to move the chains early. Trey Dye checks in at running back, but they will sling it to the wide side of the field. Pau makes the catch, pick up a four. For the first time today, let's go downstairs, visit with the woman on the sidelines, Dawn Davenport. Hey, Dawn. Well, Dave, watching Tanner Mangum in warm-ups, that left ankle was still bothering him. When I talked to him this week, he said he knew he wasn't going to be 100%, but he didn't want to use his injury as an excuse. He pointed out he has to be better at the things he can control. For him, he said that is decisiveness, his reads, that is his main focus today. Now, the coaching staff told us they are prepared to pull him and let someone else go the rest of the way if he can't be effective. Yeah, we got the indication that using the term short leash might be a little much, but not a long leash for sure. They'll go to the fullback. Braden L. Bakri brought down by Leo Lewis, the sophomore linebacker out of Brookhaven, Mississippi. Picks up five on that play. And you can see early the play calling would indicate. Let's get the ball out of the hands quickly of our quarterback. See if we can establish a couple of inside runs. Let our playmakers try to make, make plays in space, force Mississippi State to make open field tackles. Had a great opening drive for their first series last week, trying to extend this one, and that should be good enough for a first down. Scored a touchdown on their opening possession 
last week against Boise State, but that was it. They gave up 24 unanswered and lost 24 7 to Boise State. It's kind of interesting talking to offensive coordinator Ty Detmer. He said that he felt like Tanner Mangum looked pretty comfortable out there, and then an interception kind of rattled him a little bit. Impacted his decision making, wasn't as decisive. Something that he wanted to get established early in this game when you're able to move the sticks rather and extend the possession, you're able to establish some of that comfort level early. First down and 10 for the Cougars. Again, quick throw near side. Powell. This time, not a whole lot of room. Gain of a yard brought down by Tolando Cleveland. But here's how the quarterback situation has broken down. Now, again, once again, they, they do run some Wildcat with Austin Kofensis, but among those that throw it, Critchlow is a guy that played four snaps late in the game, but they like him. They like his upside. Coy Detmer got in some work and just uh, didn't really – Played very well when he came off the bench against Utah State, where he went 7 of 20 in that game. All right, the Simon goes in motion, but they'll hand it off going the other way and nowhere to run against the stout front for Mississippi State. No gain on the play. First one there was Trey Brown. Leo Lewis coming in. You know, Leo Lewis is a headhunter type of a linebacker. You know, new defensive coordinator Todd Grantham said, yeah, he was a freshman All-American a season ago. I need him to understand that you don't just play downhill all the time. You can't be looking to clothesline a running back. You have to understand coverage. But if you want to run between the tackles, number 10 is not scared to get downhill and rub decals with you. Olatau in the backfield along with El Bakri. They'll just do an inside handoff and get it inside Mississippi State territory, but that'll bring up a fourth down. Well, like we talked about early, and Ty, De Ty Detmer kind of indicated this, that we get a third and long, we still might run the football. And part of it is because we don't want our quarterback, who's limited from a mobility standpoint, to be a sitting duck versus a defense that will pressure you about 26% of the time. Mississippi State is going to bring pressure from somewhere. They don't want Tanner Mangum taking shots early, run the football and play field position. Linehan with a nice kick down to the 10 yard line. So a little over five and a half minutes off the clock and a 38 yard punt will turn the football over to this guy, Nick Fitzgerald. And he has been the centerpiece of the Mississippi State offense. A guy that's wanted to evolve as a passer, worked on it, over the offseason wants to demonstrate that he's more than just an electrifying runner, but make no mistake about it. Nick Fitzgerald is the game breaking talent on this offense. They've got guys that need to emerge at the receiver position. They like what they have at running back, but their quarterback is their playmaker. And even in the run game, he's the guy that can get the ball on the perimeter and break a big long play. Fitzgerald low on the opening throw of the game incomplete second down and 10 as we take a look at the Bass Pro Shop starting lineups for Mississippi State offensively and keep an eye on left tackle Greg yeah. Island he will get the start today for an injured uh, Rankin who got banged up in Auburn early two redshirt freshmen at the tackle spots yeah, that's something that you're going to see I think impact the play calling for Mississippi State as well we talked the limitations for BYU at quarterback, it's protection for the Bulldogs. Williams will pick up two as we take a look at BYU's defense. And, well, the best player maybe on the entire roster is number four, Fred Warner. Leads the team in tackles. He's a leader not only in their locker room but on the field. A guy that does it right. They really talk about what a character guy he is, but more than anything else, incredibly productive at his linebacker position. On third down and relatively long, Fitzgerald throws near side. Keith Mixon wide open first down. He'll get it out over the 30, close to the 33-yard line. That'll be a gain of 20 yards. They do so much with Keith Mixon. He's a guy that'll line up in the backfield at times. And this time was lined up in the inside slot and just gets lost. Coverage exchange never made it out to the boundary. Keith Mixon 
Second leading receiver for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald. Wrapped up close to 35. Picks up two on the play. This is something that BYU will do a lot. Try to get an exchange to play on the edge. And part of the reason is because they want to make sure that Nick Fitzgerald doesn't get loose. You see from a touchdown responsible for 12 in those first three games, only one in their last two defeats. What you're saying, this might be a quarterback driven offense? Yeah, I am saying that. The statistics would support that. Here. Here's Fitzgerald looking for a little bit of room and not much there. BYU all over it. Picks up three as we take a look at today's keys to the game brought to you by Lending Tree. You know, BYU defensively, they want to make sure they do exactly what they just did on that play. Contain the QB run game. Fitzgerald's the one that can hurt you. Mississippi State, they want to look to make the easy throws. So far we've seen that. The first play looked like they were trying to take a shot, but they don't want Fitzgerald to look for the deep ball as much. They want to take the easy layups. Rolling near side, pass is complete. Pickup of seven, that goes to Jackson. Talk about wanting to get more size at the receiver position. Jesse Jackson is one of those guys that Mississippi State needs to emerge at wide receiver. 6'2", north of 200 pounds. A big target, and you could see that time Fitzgerald had the option to tuck and run, was able to find Jackson to move the sticks. A little too tight in look for Mississippi State on first down and 10. Fitzgerald, a little shoulder fake, now he's in some trouble. Open in the middle of the field. Keith Mixon again to the 35 yard line, another 20 yard pickup, and he's slow to get up. Zane Anderson lost a helmet, he'll have to leave for a play. We mentioned Fred Warner earlier, got pressure on Fitzgerald, moved him off of his spot. But Nick Fitzgerald showing his arm strength, a little shoulder fake. He's got traffic in front of him. And falling away from that throw, was able to get enough on that one to get it downfield to Mixon. We'll keep an eye on him and his injury because he's meant a lot to this offense through the first half of this season. The receiving core that's already lost Malik Deer. Probably going to sit him out for the remainder of the year. Play clock winding down, two seconds. Nice hole off the right side. Down to the 15-yard line goes Harris Williams. He'll pick up 19 more yards. Nice pull by Darrell Williams from his left guard position. And Harris Williams hits the hole quickly. Gets downfield quickly and then is able to high hurdle Tanner Jacobson trying to come up and make that tackle low. You can see why Dan Mullen likes what he has at running back this year between the tackles. Again, go with Williams. This time, not a whole lot of room. Well, they were talking about Williams yesterday, just the energy he brings. That guy is always on go mode. Well, he's on go mode even at the end of a run. He wasn't looking at it in that run in just some traditional manner. Why don't I jump up two straight 100 plus yard games earlier this season. This is what they need to get going a little bit more. Establish that ground game that powered their first three victories. Tenth play of this drive coming up on second down and let's call it nine. Fitzgerald trying to find some running room. Has it to the five. Powering his way to the end zone. Touchdown. Mississippi State 15 yards. We talk about Nick Fitzgerald using that length. He's every bit of 6'5". We were with him in the meetings yesterday. Big, long quarterback able to extend and knows that ball over the goal line. Nick Fitzgerald has now accounted for 57 career touchdowns, his 25th career rushing touchdown, sixth this year. Boy, what a drive by Mississippi State. Ten plays, 89 yards, a little over four minutes to go. Williams. Hurdles a BYU defender. And then Fitzgerald just lowers his nose and gets it to the end zone. Play off the flea flicker. Don't let anything behind you and give up anything cheap. 
Trying to set up a little screen game, and they do to Trey Die, and he'll be, ooh, that's going to be close to the mark. Maybe a little bit shy, got nine and a half. Brandon Bryant comes up to make the play. I'll be interested to see how long BYU sticks with this defensive philosophy because you've got Mississippi State with the runner at quarterback. They've got six available blockers, including a ball carry and a quarterback, and only five defenders in the tackle box. I'll be surprised if the Bulldogs get away from the run if this persists. They'll fake it to Williams. Fitzgerald, pass caught. And he finds Gabe Miles. The senior picks up 21 yards in the BYU territory. Gabe Miles was missed. He missed three games. They needed him to be a compliment to Donald Gray. Excellent protection, plenty of time. A couple of pats of the ball. Nick Fitzgerald has had a clean pocket to work in for most of the game thus far. Pressure comes. Bulldogs pick it up. Pass is caught. Inside the 40, that'll be good enough for another first down. Jamal Couch on the reception. Jamal's fourth catch of the year. Had a couple of grabs against Auburn last week, or time. two weeks ago. Yeah, he's a guy that they need to emerge a little bit more. Among their size receivers, Jamal Couch is their most experienced. Only got limited looks a season ago, but a huge target at 6'4". And here is a flag. It looks like it's a procedure penalty. False start. Offense, number 17, five-yard penalty, first down. Let's get an update from the studio. All right. Oh, boy, when they're there, you got to make them pay, right? And John Kelly is the playmaker for Tennessee. They're working the receiving skills. Wouldn't have been an easy one to rally in there. But what a good runner he is. I like the idea that you kind of empty the playbook, whatever it takes to win. Fitzgerald, a lot of time to throw. Pass is called. Donald Gray with the reception. He'll be marked out of bounds to 33, a nine yard pickup. You know, as Gabe Miles is reinserted in a wide receiver position, that's when I think the passing offense can start finding its legs again for Mississippi State. They need that compliment. Donald Gray's a good receiver, but he's not a guy that's able to overcome a defense's singular focus. They need another threat in that receiving core. Take it again to Williams. Fitzgerald throws on the run. I'm going to say pass is caught. We're talking about it. Thomas on the reception if it holds. There's another look. They end up ruling this incomplete. The ball comes popping out. Didn't complete the catch, but it looks like. Not finished the process of the catch. And Dedrick Thomas is another guy that kind of got force-fed reps for Mississippi State at wide receiver over their bye week. You know, the timing probably couldn't have come any better for the Bulldogs after those two defeats. And they were probably pretty much kind of lopsided defeats at that. You get out of there, you're able to work on your offense and get guys like Dedrick Thomas some more looks. Uh, there's no question that ball came out, did not complete the catch. Fitzgerald, good foot, footwork in the pocket and almost a nice throw. It was a good throw. Thomas just couldn't hold on. Almost identical circumstances. Thomas again dealing with the boundary. I had a chance to bring that one in. He had at least two yards of buffer between he and the boundary line. You got to catch this one downfield for your quarterback. So they're going for it on fourth down. Mississippi State this year on fourth downs, four out of ten. Fitzgerald, Donald Gray had it, dropped it. Flag is down, though, right as he was making his break. You can see Fitzgerald was wanting to work to the field side of the formation, had trips to his right and came back to Donald Gray, who it was pretty physical at the top of the route, but got tangled up. Pass interference, defense, number one, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Boy, Fitzgerald keeps bending over like he's in some sort of pain. 
working against Troy Warner. You see a little bit of hand fighting there at the end. The flag came out, the Big 12 officiating crew and able to extend that drive. A huge penalty right there on a fourth down. A first down and 10. They'll give it to Williams. Picks up three. It's almost like Nick Fitzgerald's been messing around with his equipment. Timeout on the field with 12.38 to go. Second quarter football. Bulldogs knocking on the door back in a moment. Well, right before we went to break, we were talking about Nick Fitzgerald just kind of looking uncomfortable. He was messing around, bent over a few times, couldn't tell if he was in some pain. But during that timeout, it was quite apparent what was going on. His rib protectors weren't feeling very good. Oh, he was looked like he had a bear claw lodged right there underneath his ribs, Tommy Boy style. Turns out it was a rib protector. Who knew? We'll see how that affects him. Second down coming up for the Bulldogs. Second down and seven. Ball sits just outside the 15 yard line. Williams to the left of Fitzgerald. A couple of tight ends in this formation work to the right side. Williams gets it down inside the 15. Four yard pickup. Fred Warner comes up to make the play. It's a simple downhill run. And Harris Williams, you know, he's one of those guys where it seems like he's always falling forward, that type of a back. He's not going to get knocked back off and pick up another half yard, another yard after contact. Tenth play of this drive. They'll stack receivers to the left, but run it to the right. Fitzgerald cuts it back. Big hit at the 10. Uses that 6-5 frame and picks up five and a first down. No rib protector. You know, we were talking about whether or not it was an actual injury. Took those rib protectors off. And on these inside runs, that quarterback power game, he's going to take some shots. He's going to deliver some blows as well. That time got the better of Zane Anderson. First and goal. Hand off to Williams. Spins out of trouble. Keeps his feet alive. We'll maybe get a yard or two when it's all said and done. Sione Takitaki did a great job getting into the backfield quickly. And to me, that penetration, Harris oh, Williams, that was a one yard run, but that was tremendous effort just to get back to the line of scrimmage. The playmaker for the BYU Cougar defense and Takitaki was all over. Second and goal from the seven. Fitzgerald. Has all day, high throw, and picked off in the end zone. This could go all the way back for Dian Gawoloku. Breaks a tackle and is down at the 32-yard line. Fitzgerald chases him down, but Gawoloku comes up with a huge interception. His first of the year had three picks last season. Ball a little bit high, and you could see tipped. And Gowalaku's right there. Did a great job coming out of the shadows, the corner of the end zone. And Fitzgerald, credit him at his quarterback position, turned into a DB that time. Otherwise, Gowalaku might have taken it the distance. See how? BYU handles the turnover. Usually they're the team that's been turning it over this year. They were minus 10 in the turnover margin department, 125th in the country. They'll dump it off to Hifo, and he is met rather abruptly just inside the 30 around the 29-yard line. He's trying to hit Eris Williams, and that ball's a little bit high and behind him. Gualaku who was in coverage in the back of the end zone. And he was actually marking Jordan Thomas, a huge target at that, at his tight end position. And, you know, to me, it's such a huge, it's not only do you deny the end zone to your opponent, but flip the field and give your offense a chance to get in a sport scoring position here. Handoff left side on second down. 
They're going to say loose football. Mississippi State wants it, and they will have it. Boy, in that pile, BYU just lost the football. Polotau looked like he was going to get close to first down yardage, but Marquis Spencer comes away with the football. Well, Mark McLaurin came raging downhill from his safety spot and gets around the legs of Tolatau. Then Brandon Bryant comes in there. And I think it might have been, it's hard to tell. I don't know if it was Jeffrey Simmons who rakes this ball out. Regardless, back-to-back -back almost turnovers in the Mississippi State offense back out on the field. Rolling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. Previous play is now under further review. Dan Romeo out of the Big 12, our referee today. Yeah, it looks to me like Simmons got the ball out. And the question is, is Talatau's left elbow, you know, did that make contact? It would obviously establish him down before this ball comes out. I can't see the ball from yeah, that angle. It, it, boy, it is hard to pick it out amongst all those bodies hitting the ground. And again, the ruling on the field was fumble, so you've got to have indisputable evidence to overturn that call. And I did not hear a whistle, so the immediate, immediate continuing action. The ball's out now, or on its way out. So Mississippi State will have the football. First down and 10 from the 26 yard line. And Fitzgerald, well, that's one of those things good for him in, in regards to he didn't have to chew on that interception for very yeah, long exactly. back on the field. Right, you get right back out there, defense doing a great job. You just mentioned it, BYU gets a takeaway. They've grown accustomed to giving the ball back and they did subsequently off of the pick. Nice handoff to the freshman. Highland Hill, and they are real excited about this young man. You know, Dan Mullen is not going to play a running back unless he can be a complete running back. You're not just a ball carrier, but he knows the talent he has in this true freshman. We talk about Nick Fitzgerald being a game-breaking talent. Well, Kylan Hill is one that can take it the distance, but can he operate the offense to its fullest extent with him in there? He doesn't want to put more pressure on Nick Fitzgerald to make sure the true freshman is doing it right. Back-to-back -back carries now for Hill, who was the highest-rated running back to come to Mississippi State since Jarius Norwood back in 2002. Top 10 running back nationally. You know, it was interesting talking to Coach Mullen. You know, through the years, depending on the type of talent he has at quarterback in the quarterback run game, you got a big physical runner like a Tim Tebow, you can have smaller backs. And you've got a guy like Nick Fitzgerald who's big but speedy, those backs are bigger and more downhill. Kylan Hill can do a little bit of both. On second down, Fitzgerald buys a little bit of time, tries to fit it into a small window, but here comes the flag on the back end of that play. Tanner Jacobson on coverage on Farad Green, the tight end. Pass interference, offense, number 25. Penalty enforced at the spot of foul, automatic first down. Probably just misspoke there, obviously, on the defense. they are saying Tanner Jacobson got there a little bit early. I got to tell you, they're, they're calling it pretty tightly. That's two pass interference calls that I think easily could have, the flag could have stayed in their pocket. From midfield, hard run from Nick Gibson, the sophomore, 
still on his feet. I think he lost his shoe in the process. He did. An 11-yard pickup. Another five-man box for BYU. Darrell Williams pulling from left guard. Man, Nick Gibson, he was clean into the line of scrimmage, doesn't even need both shoes. Got the pink socks, they got excellent traction. Picked up a couple of yards with just one shoe. The Susan G. Komen socks, do they have cleats on the bottom of those bad boys? <laughs> oh, with today's technology, you never know. You never know. First down and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Leading seven to nothing, second quarter action. Around the corner goes Kylan Hill from just down the road in Columbus, Mississippi. We're running it, a sweep, outside run into the boundary. And right now Mississippi State kind of having their way with BYU up front. You know, they don't have as many numbers. They've got size, there's no question. But they're not loading the box to be sure. Many times, a lot of these runs outnumbered. Hill again on the carry. He'll have enough for the first down. Give him three. Well, Mississippi State is just uh, owning the football right now. And if the game were kept in terms of yards, they would be winning by a large margin, but that's not how we keep score. <laughs> no, we actually we used to score but go by points. Yeah, is that how we do it? Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. But you're right, uh, dominating so far. And, you know, this is a bonus possession because of the red zone turnover in the end zone. What a nice play action. Fitzgerald all day to throw going to the end zone, and that is incomplete. Dave Miles looks like he almost gave up on the end of that route. Troy Warner on coverage. The ball was headed to the corner of the end zone. Gabe Miles was bending his route. Ended up on the outside shoulder. Miles was looking over his inside. He was unable to adjust to the ball in the air. Troy Warner in coverage for BYU. No so Mississippi State will send four receivers to the wide side of the field. One to the near side. We'll try to set up a little screen and it works. First down. And then some Thomas with a nice move, still on his feet inside the 10. It'll be another first and goal for the Bulldogs. The easy pickets. And you've got numbers now on the perimeter. You look outside, you mentioned the four receiver side. You've got three blockers. There's one BYU defender in proximity. It's actually surprising that Mississippi State didn't even get in the end zone considering the convoy that was out front. Play action, quick hitter, passes, bobbled and caught. Donald Gray, touchdown to Mississippi State, nine yards out. The second touchdown grab of the year for Donald Gray his ninth of his career. Jace Crispin with the point after. It is up and good. Two touchdown lead now for Mississippi State. 7.07 to go, second quarter football. The Mississippi State, they haven't started quickly in a number of their games, but they have come screaming out of the gates versus BYU. Up two touchdowns early. Mangum has time, throws to the wide side, and that's a heck of a grab. Just shy of the first down. It goes to Matt Bushman, a tight end that they love throwing to. Kind of the comfort blanket, if you will, for Tanner Mangum. Well, the second target for Bushman in this game, and you're right. He's a guy that obviously had time this possession of this snap rather to work his way through the reads and then come back to Bushman. They're trying to encourage Mangum to get away from Bushman a little bit because he's been targeted so much coming into this game. 41 times the passes have headed towards number 89, a true freshman and a big target at tight end at 6'5". Also a baseball player for the Cougars. 
They'll fake the toss sweet. Mangum. Deep down the middle has a man wide open at the 28 yard line. Hefo somehow got open among three maroon jerseys. Well, we haven't seen BYU go deep often in this game. This play broke down. You know, Tanner Mangum fakes the quick toss, ends up getting flushed out of the pocket. Montez Sweat able to get upfield. And Mangum has just enough mobility, moved pretty well that time on a banged up ankle and plenty of arm strength to get it downfield to Hefo for a big explosive play, something. 43 yard pickup and during that sequence, the chain broke. We'll see that very often. So now such an explosive play, it broke the chain. Look at that, look at that. Uh, the chain did not break, the stopper broke, came off the bottom. Well, these guys can talk about the chain all they want on Monday night at 7. They talk about football from an offensive, defensive perspective. Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears, 7 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network every Monday night. These guys uh, they have a strong bond. They're linked together, as it were. You see what we did? Beautiful. I mean, yeah, just thanks, seriously, buddy. I mean, you're bringing a tear to my eye right now. The way you weave it. Hey, these explosive plays at Mississippi State <laughs> defensively. That was one of the things they were looking to keep out. Mangum going to the near side, and there's a couple of flags that come in. Simon covered by Durr, and Lashard may have been grabbing on a jersey. I got to tell you, I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not allowing a whole lot of physical play and coverage in this game. Now, we've seen two go Mississippi State's way, one on a, a very big fourth down conversion. We saw another extended drive on the second down. But here's a third P.I., and all three have been somewhat inconsequential seemingly. There were fouls by both teams. Ineligible receiver downfield offense, number 71. Pass interference. Defense, defense number, number 25. 25. Those fouls will, will offset, offset and will, will replay, replay first, first down. down. Well, illegal man downfield. You don't see that very often. Well, we see it a lot. It's just not called That's a, lot. a great point. <laughs> That's a great point, but you can see it. Austin Hoyt, here he is. I mean, he's all the way downfield. He's what a good seven, eight yards downfield. Didn't get the memo that the ball was going to be coming out. I, you know, there's not a ton of contact really on any of these. If anything, it would be mutual. The receiver and the defensive back kind of hand fighting, a little bit surprised that a flag came out. Third PI we've seen in this game. That'll change your play calling, though, no question. I mean, you'll take a shot. If it's a jump ball scenario in the end zone, see if you can't draw a PI downfield and pick up some cheap yards. So first down and 10. Kofintis in at the Wildcat. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Had to dodge a couple of players to do so. Might have actually lost a yard. Gary Green came up and got credit for the tackle behind the line. Gary Green played that very well. Just trying to work a read. He pulls. The football tries to get out on the edge. And Gary Green kept his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. And a negative yardage play out of the Wildcat. I haven't had a ton of success out of that formation. I, I got to tell you, I, I'm waiting for them to throw out of that. Mississippi State's crashing in on him in the Wildcat. Well, and Kofensis, a former high school quarterback, went to Wisconsin to start his career and threw the javelin. So he's got arm strength, right? Stab one in there. <laughs> Going up top, Mangum trying to loft it up in the back of the end zone too far for everybody. Now it'll be third down and 11. At that time, he's trying to find Micah Simon. He bracketed in coverage. Two defenders deep, Jamal Peters over the top. And Ty Detmer mentioned, they got a couple of guys that they want to get downfield. Jonah Trenneman, who we've seen in the screen game, and that time, Micah Simon. And now a third and 10 plus. We've seen BYU be very conservative on third downs, but you're in the red zone fringe here. 
Little draw play. El Bakri needed 11 and he got four. So BYU will bring out their field goal unit. BYU averaging just 11.7 points per game. Third fewest points in FBS football. Red Allman, who is five out of seven this year in the field goal department, 22 of 28 in his career. This is a 38 yarder. He has three 37 yard field goals, which are his longest to date. Trying to set a new career high for the far hash. Good clean snap. Hold is on the way. And the kick is delivered. BYU is on the board with a 38 yard field goal from Rhett Almond. Took a shot on first down. Just inside the 50. Fitzgerald will keep it himself. Nick. Inside the 35, down to the 34. Zane Anderson trips him up, but another 15-yard pickup for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it's just easy pickings. You know, you motion a back out of the backfield, and that moves linebacker Adam Pulsifer right out of the box. You got four down linemen. Might as well just run it right upfield in the QB run game. Mississippi State wanted a timeout. They got it. We'll step aside with them. 138 to go before half. All right, coming up with the SEC Halftime Report, Peter Burns, Gene Chizik, Chris Doran will give you an update of Tennessee, South Carolina, also LSU-Auburn preview, but what are you guys seeing down right now? It's about what we expected. I'd like to see a little more clean execution by the Mississippi State offense. Yeah, though. I think they're still sleepwalking a little bit, a little hangover from the last couple losses, but they need to get, get it together in the second half. Maybe no more drop passes, right? Right. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, guys. Good to see the boys on the set. We'll see you guys in a matter of moments. 1.38 to go before halftime here. Williams with that carry on first down. We'll pick up three. Here is Williams on the carry. And a three-yard gain, second and seven. Pretty balanced. Mississippi State with 145 on the ground, 126 through the air. Fitzgerald will throw. Boy, another drop ball. There have been three, four, maybe five drops today. I'm Keith Mixon. Guys back in the studio jinx the Mississippi State receivers. No more drops. One play later, they got one. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Bulldogs' famous Maroon Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. That is six drops we have charted. One eleven to go. First half. On that second down play, Mississippi State was trying to go fast after the first down snap. Nice catch inside the 20. It's Donald Gray. He'll pick up 13 and move the chains. You talk about security blankets. How about Donald Gray? He did a great job fighting across the defender's face, Chris Wilcox. He catches that ball, and it was a contested throw. Fitzgerald keeps it again, and Nick will be hit around the 15. He'll pick up four and a half. And the clock. It's second, 40 seconds. Second time they've run that play on this drive. That time, Butch. Pau just stayed right inside, but either way, it's an easy four-yard game. Over the middle. Incomplete. Clock will stop with 29 seconds. Chris Wilcox on the coverage of Donald Gray. Well defended. Great job breaking that pass up. Get your offhand right across the defender. And Chris Wilcox had one completed in front of him previously. Able to deny the end zone and a touchdown reception. So timeout BYU on third down and six. And, you know, it, you don't want to ever put it, all of it on the quarterback's shoulder, but it is quite apparent when, when Nick Fitzgerald is rolling, so is Mississippi State. Yeah, well, I mean, when you've got a guy that's as dynamic a playmaker, he's kind of evolved in that passing game. But more than anything else, when you want an explosive play, when you need a key play, it's come at that quarterback position. And oftentimes, with the quarterback keeping the ball in his hands, running with the football, 
But you face defenses that are able to key in on that without feeling as if they're compromised elsewhere. And the numbers speak for themselves. The offensive generation almost evaporating versus Georgia and Auburn relative to what they saw previously. And Auburn, they, they felt kind of good about it. Coach Mullen even mentioned through three quarters, the rushing numbers were, were similar between, between the two squads, but it was the big plays, the explosive plays that the Mississippi State defense gave up. It was a difference in the game. On third down, Fitzgerald will keep it himself. Nick cuts it back, dives for the end zone, touchdown. And there he is, making a play for his club. 14 yards out on the run, and it's 20 to three. Fitzgerald, the third time they ran that play, and he's clearly in the end zone using that big body. Point after is up and good. 22 seconds to go before the break, and the Bulldogs have scored three times. Two rushing touchdowns by Fitzgerald, one through the air. He has now accounted for 59 career touchdowns, second most in Mississippi State history behind Dak Prescott with 114. Well, this is a pretty exotic play design. This is a lead draw. You got one, two, three, four, five guys, and he's wide way out here. You're going to end up just getting a lead block from your running back. You don't even hardly need to block anybody. These light boxes, they ran the same play three times on this drive. One was with the motion, the back motion out of the backfield. But that's easy pickets. I mean, there's just not enough bodies. You just have to cover up the defenders and let your quarterback work his way upfield. Nick Fitzgerald very much powering that drive with the QB run game. How about 45 plays in the first half for Mississippi State, 302 yards. BYU has run 24 plays for 121 yards. 20 first downs for the Bulldogs, four for the Cougars. You've got to keep in mind, too, we've had that turnover in the end zone. Score could have been different if the Mississippi State defense didn't, didn't get the ball back. Redman will bring it out deep in the end zone, but a flag down right at the 35 where Mississippi State kicked the football. Well, these are when these new headsets officials have been wearing the last couple of years really Offside. come in handy. <laughs> That's right. Number 50. That five-yard penalty be and it added to the end of the run. Correction. Re-kick. Five-yard penalty be added and re-kick. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern, our SEC Now team will be back to recap all of the day's games. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Dari, Coach Chiz, Chris Doring breaking it all down in the studio tonight on a busy day in the Southeastern Conference. Alabama back home tonight against Arkansas. We saw the Hogs last week and they have got some issues to figure out. And it's not the best place to figure them out. Man, if I'm Austin Allen, I'm giving some serious thought as to whether or not I want to subject myself to that <laughs> kind of punishment. Last year, I got nervous for them. The Alabama's a little bit different defensively. They don't pressure the quarterback as well as they did a season ago. But after what we saw last week versus South yeah. Carolina and the shots that Austin Allen had already taken, I mean, at the end of that game, that guy looked like he'd been beaten by a rubber hose, just rough yeah. on the quarterback for Arkansas. So we'll re-kick it. Here's Logan Cook. Very returnable from inside the 15-yard line. So about a three or four-yard difference when it's all said and done. We talk about Alabama, Georgia certainly as uh, we get closer to the release of the college football rankings. They're certainly in that mix. Uh, things looking good. Clemson last night getting beat. Washington State getting throttled out west by Cal. The Bulldogs, it is right there in front of them. You know, they got a guy in Nick Chubb who I think very quietly has put together a pretty phenomenal season. Not a whole lot of national awards talk 
for him, but got the eighth most career rushing yards. They hadn't had to throw the ball much at Georgia. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the true freshman quarterback. BYU just wants to get to the house and try to figure things out. 21 to 3, our halftime score. Time for us to get into the studio and the boys, led by Peter Burns. Take it away, Peter. All right, thank you, Dave Neal. Well, behind him resulted in an interception. They need to clean that element of the offense up. We are underway. Bulldogs will have the football first as they kick off sales through the end zone. Let's head down to the field, check in with Don Davenport. Well, Dave, Nick Fitzgerald's ability to take off and run was a concern for head coach Kalani Sataki coming in. It is even more of a concern for him in the second half, but he did not put the offensive struggles on his, or the struggles to stop him on his defense. He put it on his offense. He said the fact that they played 50 snaps, his defense played 50 snaps in the first half, there's just a lot, not a lot they could do to slow Nick Fitzgerald down. Now, offensively, they will stick with Tanner Mangum. They said he's feeling okay. Okay, and they just need to be better on third down. We'll see how that transpires here in the final two quarters. First play, handoff right side. Pick up a four for Harris Williams. And you look at our first half stats and just pretty solid balance in that pass game. Could have really been even bigger in terms of yardage, 139 so far. You know, we missed a couple of the drops downfield, but you know, you look at the third downs, three of seven isn't that bad. The issue is, is that offensively, BYU only ran 24 snaps. You left your defense out there on the field a long time there in the first half. Williams again cuts it back. He'll have the first down out to the 37-yard line, averaging 81 yards a game, sixth best in the conference, had a career high 191 last year in the Egg Bowl. And one thing that this team does is they do a nice job of holding on to the football. They're closing in on 250 attempts without a fumble. Only team in the SEC this year without a fumble. Nowhere to run. BYU all over that play on the left side. Only a gain of one for Williams. Yeah, that's a big part of it. You know, obviously, you be able to stage drives, not only possessing the football, can't kick it over. You got to be able to protect it. And as run centric as the offense is, it's the fumbles that concern you. The ball isn't in the air as much from an interception standpoint. Second down. Pressure right up the middle, but they'll swing it out to Williams. Breaks a couple of tackles and stumbles to the 45 yard line. Another Bulldog first down after 17 yards. Well, Harris Williams was the targeted receiver on the interception. And you can see why they like him managing the pocket as Nick Fitzgerald kind of had to flop, flop inside. A little bit of Kafusi was coming in there from his defensive end position. Did a good job of delivering the football late. Keep it on the ground. They'll go with a freshman, Kylan Hill. Driving the pile inside the 35. He'll have a dozen yards in a first down. When we talk about speed. Kylan Hill's a guy that finishes his runs physically. Such a young guy early in his career. And as this season unfolds, he's going to get a larger and larger role, get more and more carries. They want to make sure that their running backs stay involved. You can see that they've got a nice eight. That time, Hill stumbles, picks up a couple. He's a guy that had nine 200 yard plus rushing games as a junior and senior in high school at Columbus High School. About 25 minutes down the road. Rushed for 1,750 yards and 27 touchdowns. Averaged 10 yards a carry last year as a senior. For a guy that's been in college that long, He's got a couple of training table meals. He's put together. I mean, he looks the part. Might be a little bit of Nick Chubb in his frame. Fitzgerald trying to look like Joe Montana. 31 yards to Jamal Couch. Touchdown, Mississippi State.
Couple of touchdown passes now for Fitzgerald. A couple of rushing touchdowns. Another 75-yard drive for Mississippi State. This one three minutes off the clock. Point after is up and good. Excellent throw by Nick Fitzgerald right on the money. Well, after a series of runs, a nice matchup right here. They're just locked up in man coverage. We've seen them go after this boundary side. It's the short side of the field. And Nick Fitzgerald just drops this one right in the barrel. Great job by Couch. Runs right by the coverage. Troy Warner again. You can see the size differential, but this time he just runs right past the coverage. You can see Dan Mullen earlier. He was talking with Donald Gray. They got a little bit tangled up with Troy Warner on that same sideline side before the halftime. And Mullen was saying, don't look back, just keep running. You're going to run right past the coverage. And we were talking with Elisa Tuiaki yesterday, the defensive coordinator at BYU, and said, who's your best cover corner? Who's your guy who's best that you can kind of single up? And, it, and he really didn't feel it comfortable with any of them. He wants to be able to try to stay in, in zone coverage. And obviously, you can see the frustration starting to build on that BYU sideline. That drive, Mississippi State could have done just about whatever they wanted. They ran the football well, and then they finally took the shot at the end zone. Logan Cook. To the goal line. Michael Shelton bringing it out. Shelton hit around the 18-yard line. But Nick Fitzgerald, again, showing you his dual-threat capabilities today. And you look at his 5,546 total yards of offense. He just needs a few more to move to fifth. I think he's about 13 yards shy. There's a relatively decent chance he picks those up. Well, he started today in eight, so he's already moved up two spots. I would, I would assume we'll see him move up another, another spot. You think so? Just, I'm just guessing. Passing or running? I'm going to go running. Uh -huh. Maybe receiving, huh? Could be. Haven't seen that dimension yet today. Out of the pistol formation. Mangum on the run. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. Well, that is a tough throw. Running left, throwing back to your right over the middle. Montez Sweat, the J.C. linebacker, J.C. transfer linebacker, putting the heat on Mangum. Well, and that pocket was collapsing right in Mangum's face. Sweat ended up getting the shot late. I will say, I don't know how mobile we're used to seeing Mangum, but he hasn't seemed that hampered by the ankle injury. It might have diminished some of his speed. I haven't seen him limping. He's definitely gutting it out. Uh, but I haven't seen it really hamper his mobility much. Ulatola Utau with the carry. He will. We thought we'd see him a lot. We haven't really seen him. He only had five carries in the first half. He only had nine carries last yeah. week versus Boise State. And that was a focal point, but here's the difficulty, and it happened versus Boise State as well for BYU. The score gets away from him. And if you're the play caller and Ty Detmer, you're saying, look, we can only gain so many yards. When you look at what they have at the running back spot, they're not guys that are going to stretch the field quickly. They're not big chunk yardage gainers. Oatayo will head to the bench on this third down throw. Pass is caught. Simon spins out of it, has the first down at the 35, a gain of 11. Mangum throws the strike this time, clean pocket, able to find Micah Simon, one of the guys that wanted to get targeted more. After a gain of 11 yards. Only three-man pressure, dropping back into coverage, a missed tackle in the secondary by J.T. Gray. Played linebacker a season ago. Just moved back to safety, spent some time at nickelback as well for Todd Grantham for this year's defense, a, a revamped defense in that regard. J.T. Gray, a guy that they're seeking to make plays for them physically in the run game. They can also hold up in coverage. Mangum trying to dump it off underneath the defenses. And that did not warrant that kind of hit from Leo Lewis, and that'll be a flag. Yeah, that's just a dumb play. I mean, you talk about Todd Grantham saying we need to play more disciplined, and you know that's going to earn Leo Lewis a trip to the sideline and a little visit from his head coach. And he's sitting there saying, "Look, man, 
And we're playing good balls and uncatchable balls. Not something you have to do. And just be smart about it. Leo Lewis, a talented guy at linebacker. Oof. He's getting a strong talking to from his head coach. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, number 10, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, I mean, that's Bush League. It's totally unnecessary. You're a good player, man. Don't play like an idiot. And Dan Mullen's over there saying, look. Same you know, thing. This, and this, he's saying the exact <laughs> same, same thing. thing. Right. You know, Todd Grantham talked about Leo Lewis. Like, this is a talented guy. Uh, we need to get him to understand, yeah. see the field more, understand coverage more, make better decisions, use some of that talent. And off left side. Polatau picks up a couple. You know, this is the last chance for BYU to pick up a Power 5 victory this season. They have a chance to, you know, you look at their schedule coming up, and there are some winnable games down the road. They've they're got to make another long trip next week, though. they got East Carolina next week. But San Jose State, Fresno State, UNLV, UMass, Hawaii, they get the extra game this year because they do travel to Hawaii. Permissible by the NCAA to play a 13-game schedule, which could certainly help them. And you see there 11 straight years with a win versus a Power 5 by a non-Power 5 school. Second down. No Backery slides out of the... Backfield, but that pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it's incomplete. It's been that kind of afternoon. He tipped at the line. Even if you're trying to get pickup yardage there, if there's time, ball coming out quickly, something that Ty Detmer said he wanted to emphasize in this game. They haven't always had that luxury. You've seen some big plays. The defense coming up. They've had some nice shots. Well, the biggest play we've seen defensively from Mississippi State was the forced fumble on the heels of the interception. But this unit has played pretty admirably versus the BYU offense so far. BYU four of eight on third downs. They are looking at a third down and seven. This is where they get in trouble throwing the football with a bunch of those picks. Mangum steps up, fires, and that one is dropped at the 39 or 41 yard line. Micah Simon was the intended receiver. JT Gray on the coverage, and here comes a kicking situation, a punting situation now for BYU. You can see why JT Gray is a guy that Todd Grantham coveted. Able to match up in coverage, a guy that can support in the run game, and one of those guys that they've used in a bunch of different spots. Previous coordinators spent time in the tackle box. That time with a nice pass breakup. Fair catch call for by Donald Gray, Jr. 41-yard kick. Mississippi State with the football up big here at home. Nick Fitzgerald, 6'5", 230. The junior has uh, shown us a quality skill set today. He's a guy that, as we mentioned, coming into this season was going to have to play a really significant role from Mississippi State offensively, and he's kind of stepped into that. And they were used to getting some big play from quarterbacks around here under Dan Mullen. One guy that's playing for the Cowboys now, acquitted himself relatively well at the next level. Didn't know how that was going to look like, what that transition was going to look like, rather. I think Fitzgerald trying to fill some pretty sizable shoes for Dak Prescott. Yeah, we were here for Texas A&M game last year when Texas A&M came in as the fourth ranked team in the college football playoff rankings and it wasn't a breakout game but it certainly was about as good as you could play as a quarterback he put on a show that afternoon had a great game obviously losing Trevor Knight for Texas A&M yeah. opened up the door for Mississippi State see confidence growing last year in his first year as a starter just a straight handoff and nowhere to run on second down and about six, loss of a yard for Williams. Taki Taki now with eight tackles for the Cougars. Well, and he's 
very active guy from the second level to line him up at the end of the line of scrimmage. He's got excellent speed, You're kind of a slippery guy, not a big size guy, not a power guy at the point of attack. But he can make plays in space, and he's not scared to kind of get his nose dirty. You see that jersey spent some time on the ground. But he's been very active from that edge position. Third down, and Fitzgerald has his pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage, so that'll be a fourth down. Coming up for Mississippi State, good defensive stand by the Cougars. Well, that's obviously you want to see guys continue to play. We were talking with the coaches yesterday. They mentioned that, look, these guys have played hard. It hasn't always been pretty. The score's gotten away from us at times, but they haven't laid down. They've had a positive attitude, and they've finished games. And that's a difficult pot spot to be in. You know, you're talking about a five-game losing streak coming into this matchup. The defense is able to force the ball back to their offense. Good kick by Logan Cook. Shelton on the return. It was met by a couple of Bulldog defenders. A 52-yard punt. Good coverage from the guys in Maroon. 28-3, Bulldogs out in front. Nothing we do is casual. Work at everything we do. Every detail the right way. Well, Mississippi State, 28 days away from Davis Wade Stadium, but five of the next seven games are right here at Scott Field. They are glad to be home after that just uh, brutal two-game stretch at Georgia, at Auburn. Bo Tanner coming around, and he'll pick up a couple of yards. Well, as far as the SEC looks, no top 25 matchups this week. You have to go back to uh, 2009 for being this late in the season without one. Alabama tonight going for 71 straight wins against an unranked opponent as Arkansas comes to town. And Georgia trying to go 7-0 for the first time since 05. Hey, man, after last night, you don't need a ranked matchup to get some big upsets, no. right? Washington State going down to Cal. And then obviously Clemson dropping a game to Syracuse. Nobody was fired up. You know, going into this weekend, kind of a ho-hum weekend. You got Oklahoma taking on Texas down the Texas State Fairgrounds. I mean, there's some tradition anyway on the line, but two big upsets already. Tough night for the predatory cat, huh? <laughs> that's right. If you're an apex <laughs> predator, you're, you're, right. you're in trouble. <laughs> but that's your mascot. Cougars go down, Tigers go down. These Cougars trying to come to life offensively. They're looking at a third down and six. Tanner Mangum has gone the distance at quarterback for BYU. Out of the pistol, they'll hand it off left side. Nothing there. Braden L. Backery will get two. And no doubt, they are just trying to Look, that, force that, feed the run. Well, that play call tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. I mean, BYU is, they are not going to get Tanner Mangum banged up any more than he already is. They're going to make sure they get out of here somewhat healthy. The third down and six, an inside run. That's uh, just, you're not going to get a whole lot of conversions. Loose football scooped up by Gray, and he'll be wrapped up and dropped. He'll spot his progress. Let's see, around the 12-yard line. Five. Fitzgerald, 14 out of 24, 200 yards through the air. They'll go the other way. And mix it again. Turn in the corner and has another first down. Well, they're using the entire width of this field right now, making BYU chase him down as Hanneman pushes him out of bounds. Yeah, you know, BYU brings pressure from the field. They just throw a quick bubble screen in that direction. Get a nice block out in front, an easy pitch and catch, and an easy conversion as well. And those are some of the throws that Dan Mullen was talking about. You know, we don't have to hit the ball downfield. Let's let our playmakers make those plays in space. It's Gerald. He'll pick up three. 
Chaz Ayu comes up to make the play. He caught Ayu in the kind of a pump fake that time, you know. He was acting like he was going to flip the ball out wide. Ayu goes up in the air and still was able to make the tackle. You see that often in the Mississippi State offense where you got a chance to pump a quick screen pass out there if you don't like the run. Fitzgerald making a couple of guys miss and will step out of bounds right near the first down line. They'll give him the first down near midfield. I wonder if those pink socks are kind of slick or something because their shoes just keep popping off. Fitzgerald's shoe came off that time. They don't wear those things year round. Breast cancer aware, uh, aware month. They're not a subtle pink, that's for sure. You can see them up here. There goes Williams to the 45-yard line or close to it. And this is one of those drives that's just devastating for a defense. You've been out there all day. I mean, 61 plays already now for Mississippi State, and we still have three minutes to go in the third quarter. And 45 snaps for the offense for Mississippi State in the first half. And BYU, let's keep in mind, you know, it's 60, 70 degrees, no humidity in Provo. They're down here at sea level, and this is a hot, humid day late in October. Fitzgerald throws to the tight end. Jordan Thomas, who's close to the 40-yard line. Let's get an update from the studio. Peter, what's happening? All right, Dave, we're going to check in our AT&T field pass just about an hour away until we see Shea Patterson. He is sitting at 2-1 and one all time at home. He averages 413 yards per game when he's down in Oxford. I'm sure Mississippi State fans are curious to see what kind of game Ole Miss is going to have today a little bit later. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, Vandy's got to get their offense going. Vandy's offense, uh, in terms of yards per game, really struggling right now. Interesting matchup in Oxford. Right here, though, a tough injury. Chaz Ayu, the true freshman out of Saratoga Springs, Utah. Former four-star recruit. Already so many injuries for BYU. I mean, it, it, there have been 31 players that have missed games or multiple games. I mean, if, several if, guys didn't even make it to the season opener, yeah. right? I mean, they never BYU never really got a chance to field the team that they wanted to. But that's been the story for a lot of squads this year. And they've been leaking ever since. It's been a guy or two every week. I mean, that, that's just crazy. 22 guys off their 2D. Ten of those have been starters that have missed games this year. They lost perhaps their best player, Fred Warner, just a few plays ago. And now Chaz Ayu being helped to the sidelines. You know, Matthew Hadley in there at linebacker. I mean, they came into this game kind of shorthanded as it were, as it was, and now you're losing even more guys. Bulldogs will pick up the first down. I mean, there's 432 yards of offense by the Bulldogs right now. And we really haven't seen, other than the one stop here in the second half, any semblance of this BYU Cougar defense able to bow its neck and slow down Mississippi State. 215 on the ground, 217 through the air. The Cougars showing pressure, Fitzgerald able to check. He'll come near side with it. Boy, Fitzgerald really saw the field well, was patient as a BYU defender was closing in on him, a 14-yard pickup to Williams. Williams, we talk about him as a ball carrier. He's good in protection, understands what they want to do offensively, picks up checks. But multiple times today we've seen him as a receiver, a complete running back. That's what... This offense requires, that's what Dan Mullen requires if you want to get steady reps. First down and 10, 10th play of this drive. They'll play fake it to Williams, Fitzgerald. 
Picked off again. Kowolaku. His second pick today out to the 44-yard line. 39-yard return. Gawolaku with his second pick today, had one in the end zone, and that one out around the five-yard line. Yeah, both of them were gift-wrapped to Gawolaku. You know, that time just too casual. Nick Fitzgerald, a little bit of pressure in his face. Butch Pau was able to get right in there and create the pressure, but threw off his back foot Personal trying to get foul. to Jordan Thomas. Face mask, offense, number 73, after the interception. 15-yard penalty. First down. First down. Here's Gawolaku. We're going to try to get the ball to Jordan Thomas, number 83. And you'll see the pressure. We bring a blitz from the linebacking second level. And Gawolaku is right underneath this route. Fitzgerald underthrows it, falling away. Trying to get it to big target. Jordan Thomas and Gawolaku, again, same spot on the field, just about about 10 yards on the field of play, and Diane Gawolaku comes up with another turnover. And a flag comes in late as Mangum is shoved to the ground. Montez Sweat was in the backfield. He Mangum got the hit on Mangum. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, first down. Boy, face mask, you had a late hit on Leo Lewis a little while ago by Leo Lewis, and now this one by Sweat. Uh, you know, I'm an offensive line guy. I'm all about keeping the quarterbacks protected and all. Uh, that was less than violent. We've seen this game, though, you know, obviously from a pass interference standpoint, they're not going to let a lot go. And uh, we've seen now, obviously, here in the second half, a couple of plays, one certainly with Leo Lewis by Mississippi State, where they just have to be a little bit more disciplined. Don't give up free yards, especially on the heels of a turnover. Mangum. Good clean pocket over the middle. Pass is caught. Touchdown. Hevo, 27 yards. Oliva Hifo, the sophomore. Well, the last time BYU got the interception, they fumbled it almost right back to Mississippi State defense. That time, Hifo matched up against safety Brandon Bryant. He was able to get into the end zone. Hifo also on the end of the biggest play in the first half, a 43-yard reception on broken down protection. Mangum now finding him twice for the two biggest plays. Allman to attempt the point after. And he converts. So an 18-point game here in Starkville, 28-10. Our tally. 27-yard pitch and catch by the Cougars. You see he throw twice. Now here he is in the slot. He's just going to come up the seam and just work a post. And you see him? Step on the toes of the safety, cross his face, and Mangum able to stab one in there. Nice clean pocket, obviously on the heels of a rough in the passer. And an interception by Nick Fitzgerald when Mississippi State was driving deep in BYU territory. And that's a bright spot from what has otherwise been kind of a dreary day for the BYU team, both sides of the ball. Defense gets a turnover, gets it back to the offense. The offense able to capitalize off of the takeaway. Cosmo likes it. It's about what, 90 degrees, 87 degrees today? A little bit of humidity in the air. Yeah. Cosmo, though. Cosmo and Bully still making it happen down there in their get ups. By the way, who won the dance off? I mean, I never got your thought on the dance off earlier. Between the mascots or yeah. up here in the booth? I'm always going to win that. Here goes Keith Mixon in a loose football, and BYU has it. 
Inside the 30-yard line, Davis comes away with a football, and the Cougars are in business. And this is your concern. If you're Dan Mullen, you're looking at your sideline going, hey, we got to wake up. Ball security now costing Mississippi State in succession. Mixon getting upfield, put together a nice return, a stick right there in the hole. Ball comes shooting out, and now BYU with excellent field position. Mississippi State defense right back out on the field. Well, it's 28 to 10 right now. We got a quarter to play with 37 seconds left in the first. Almost to the same spot they struck a second yeah. ago for the touchdown. So Mangum to the wide side and Mississippi there, Mississippi State there to make the play on Trinneman. JT Gray, the first player there for the Bulldogs. Gray, we mentioned him, talked about him a lot, obviously. But those bubble screens, you got a guy out there that can play physically, can blow right through some of these wide receivers' blocks, which is exactly what happened there on first down. He only able to pick up two yards. And he'll play for the quarter, but BYU taking advantage of some Mississippi State miscues. Well, that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. Touchdown here, and we'll have an interesting fourth quarter at Starkville. Stay with us, 28-10, Mississippi State out in front. Position inside the 30-yard line as you look at our game summary just a moment ago. 27-yard touchdown strike made it 28-10. And from the 27, here is Mangum. Little shoulder fake, pocket collapse, and down he goes. Loss of five. Sweat in there along with Jeffrey Simmons. And the Sweat ends up getting the sack, but well, watch Jeffrey Simmons right here just walk. Left guard right here, Keenan Norman right into the lap of Mangum. Jeffrey Simmons. He talked to Todd Grantham. He says, look, he's our best player. He's also our hardest worker. A guy that's got a ton of talent. Just kind of country strong right out of the box. Likes to get in the weight room, and you can see the power. He's still, I think, fully understanding just how much talent he has inside of that tackle spot. Four down look on third and long. Over the middle, that one is incomplete and no flats. Looking for Hefo, Brandon Bryant on the coverage. We hadn't seen a lot of this from BYU all game. Anything outside of the quick, quick game, three-step timing, back-to-back -back plays, you're asking protection to hold up. That time the officials let him play. Hefo, he came up expecting a flag to come out. Bryant, you know, if we had a PI all game, that maybe would have warranted it. That time the flag stayed in pockets. And obviously a tremendous fourth down for BYU in this game to try to climb back into it. One of 10 this year are the Cougars on fourth down. And a timeout taken by Mississippi State. First charge timeout. They had Matt Bushman, their tight end, one of their primary targets, walked all the way out on the boundary versus Leo Lewis. And I think Mississippi State didn't like that matchup. We'll step aside back to Starkville. Fourth down coming up. Time for a studio update. Heck of a game brewing in Knoxville. 16 play, 72 yard drive, nine minutes. South Carolina adds another field goal up 12 9. Falls still don't have a first down in the second half. Oh my goodness. I mean, you can choose your own adventure with South yeah. Carolina kicking, right? Choose your own adventure with Tennessee in general. Yeah, true. 28 10. Fourth down and 12 coming up for BYU. Some stunts up front from Mississippi State. Mangum over the middle. That one will be picked off at the goal line from Brandon Bryant. He'll bring it out. And Bryant hit at the 30 and out of bounds. Brandon's first interception of the year. Well, here's Bryant right here playing safety. They're going to come underneath 
the opposite field safety. Watch Bryant. He's just watching Mangum all the way. Comes underneath this route. Looked more like the intended receiver ball well underthrown, partly due to the pressure up front. As you mentioned, they ran a game in their defensive line, exchanging their pass rush lanes. Disrupted cut Tanner Mangum. Hadn't seen it all game, right? right. You know, they just have not been able to consistently protect the passer. Haven't been asked to very much in this game. Fitzgerald, twos are wild with him today. Two touchdown passes, two rushing touchdowns, and two interceptions. Hand it off to Williams. Nice little cut back. He'll have the first down to the 43-yard line. He'll have 10 yards on that carry. And Williams closing in on 100 yards. is up over 90. Solid performance. Now that running back position, something that they want to continue to build, continue to establish that so that it's multifaceted in their rushing approach. Quick throw to midfield. Gain of seven. Hey, college football continues right here on the SEC Network. Vandy and Ole Miss, 3.30 Eastern time. Then it... At 7.30 tonight, how about Missouri and number four, Georgia? It's our SEC Saturday night game. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Fourth ranked Georgia Bulldogs with a chance to even move up further after what transpired last night. Clemson going to Syracuse and losing to the Orange. Here's Williams to the 45 and a first down. When we talk about coaches keeping their team's head in it, well, Barry Odom, it's been ugly for Missouri for most of the year. But last week versus Kentucky on the road, you know, they had a chance there at the end. And they haven't been able to say that in most of their contests so far this year. Played hard. They still have not been able to find a way to get a victory in conference. Nick Gibson. In it running back, but Fitzgerald will keep it. Nice move, and he'll be dropped out of bounds around the 30-yard line, 15 yards rushing on that play. Nice ball fake in the backfield. You know, a lot of cross motion, you see that, and it kind of hides the mesh. And you've got that backside blocker, and you can't really see, is it, did he hand it off, did he not? Fitzgerald, very adept in that ball handling aspect, pulls it and is able to get up field quickly. Play clock down to five seconds. Fitzgerald throws, flag comes in. Couple of flags. Mixon made the reception, but a flag hit Daryl Williams, the left guard, in the back. So I'm wondering <laughs> if the flag hits you. Does yeah, that mean it's you, just, usually you worry that maybe they called a flag on you <laughs> if they hit you with the flag? An eligible receiver downfield, offense number 74, five-yard penalty, first down. I don't see that much. Well, Jenkins, the center. But the flag hit Williams. He must have just been in the way. He was, yeah, he was aiming for William, <laughs> right. or for Jenkins rather, and Williams took the bullet for him. Either way, that's twice in this game. And oftentimes, as we've mentioned, it's not a penalty that's called very often. Actually asked both sets of coaches how they feel about the ineligible receivers that lineman downfield. And off goes to Gibson. He'll get it back to the original line of scrimmage. He does not go down easily, does he? He doesn't get a ton of touches. You know, a guy that they need him to kind of round out his game as well, but runs hard, nice burst. You're not going to bring him down with just one defender. You better rally and gang tackle when 21's got the football. By the way, Fitzgerald, 101 yards rushing on 14 carries today. Career average of 6.8 per rush, but he's at 7.2 today. Inside handoff to Nick Gibson. 
You know, you hit on a little bit earlier, Stitch, about Dan Mullen really happy with his running back combination. You got a Williams, you got a Gibson, you got a Kylan Hill. We're not even seeing a Dontavian Lee. They've got guys that can stay fresh in the fourth quarter if you need that type of play. Yeah, rotate guys through there and they'll get them back. You know, these are guys that they've got eligibility. And obviously, Kylan Hill just got to the program. True freshman, Harris Williams, a junior, Nick Gibson, sophomore. There's a lot of runway in front of these running backs. Fitzgerald will keep it and try to get to the 20. That spot's going to be about a half a yard shy of the first down line. So it'll be fourth and short. I would think they would go with a jumbo type package here to try to pick up the first down. Nine and a half to go. Put Harris Williams back in there. Justin Johnson in, number 81. The tight end. We end up with a two tight end set here. We get some size. Now they're unbalanced to the left hand side with Johnson and Farad Green to the left. They will throw it on fourth and short. He'll have the first down and a little bit more. Thomas with the catch, picks up four yards. Hanneman brings him down. Nice block out in front. Easy pitch and catch. Just move the line of scrimmage. They'll run it where they're expecting it. Just throw it out there like a long handoff. And let Dedrick Thomas, one of those size receivers, young guys that they're looking to get going. Got a couple of targets in the first half, a couple of drops. Makes a nice catch there and converts the chains. First down and 10. Eight and a half to go. Hand off to Williams. Turns the corner on the right side and he'll get it inside the 10. Nice seven, maybe eight yard pickup. And the rushing yards continue to mount here. Up around 270, 271, 512 total yards of offense today for Mississippi State. And now Williams up over 100. We got a couple of guys going north of the century mark, and it's been pretty methodical, right? You know, we hadn't seen any big explosive runs. It's not like there's one big 50 yarder that accounts for a lot of these yards. It's been sizable bites, but not big chunks. The thing that stands out to me at this point is they'll have the first down. 76 plays run by Mississippi State, 40 by BYU. They just haven't been able to maintain possessions. You know, and you think about when they were able to score, it was on a short field, off of a turnover. You know, they, they turned the football over themselves, but just haven't been able to sustain drives. And on third down, when you're third and six, and you're running an inside run, you know, I think that says everything you need to know. This team is not one that's comfortable in obvious passing downs. And don't trust a quarterback to convert. Here's Williams tries to cut it to the outside. Does he get over the line? He does. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Five yards out, Aries Williams. His second rushing touchdown this year. Harris Williams earned it. He's met right at the goal line by Micah Hanneman. And he gets the better end of that deal. Muscles his way into the end zone. Boy, another 70 plus yard drive for the Bulldogs. That one, 12 plays. They have, they've had what, four 10 plus play drives today? Six and a half minutes off the clock. 35 to 10. Harris Williams, 100 yard day. Rewarded with a touchdown. Bulldogs big here at home. Welcome back to Starkville. It has been 28 days since these fans have seen Mississippi State on the field. So you know what that means? That means the Cowbells, oh yes, they are a clangin'. Check this out. This is from Year of the Cowbell. They make tens of thousands of Cowbells a year. Now, 1974 to 2010, guys, these were actually banned, but they came up with a Cowbell compromise. That's why all these fans have them. And you know what they say around Starkville, right? More cowbell, let's go. Hey guys, it's bad form to buy your own. Don't you worry, here the cowbell has you some. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, there it is. 
It's the sound of the cowbell. This kick being brought out by Trinovant, and he is hit at the 12. And I mean, to, they gave us they gave us some cowbell. I'm trying to get mine up. See? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was on, it was on mute. Yours sounded Tad or audio. Tad and audio. Been. He's loving this right now. How loud? Tad loves it, doesn't he? How about that? Yeah, it's got, it's got a name on it. I got, almost hit you. It's got a violent there, bro. A lot of anger. Some, a lot of anger. This is why there. I like the cowbell. You can get you out make, some anger, anger issues. I like the uh, ergonomic grip. Right. Just so you don't have a flying yeah. cowbell. <laughs> Tad, are Jeez. you okay? Tad and audio, are you alive? Dave, you uh, feeling a little feverish <laughs> over there, buddy? Uh, a little hostile. Right, nobody got hurt. Ball. Nobody got hurt. Mangum over the middle. Big hit right at the 15-yard line. Gain of three. That one goes to Riley Burt. It really is unique, though. You know, in, in fact, the BYU players, they talked about how the uh, the coaches, they were ringing cowbells at practice. Yeah. You'll get that just everywhere. It's very distracting. You know, he said, you know, he, part of the reason they wanted to make this trip down here is great. A lot of these kids haven't seen this part of the country, SEC environment. You know, the kids would come and enjoy, not enjoying this part yeah. of it, but yeah. it's another, um, you know, it's another learning experience. And did you have a trip? I know you guys are all business. You know, they say you're all business, but when you were playing at Georgia, where did you want to go? Where did you like playing on the road? Is there a place that you kind of? You know, it's weird because you end up, you spend time in an airplane, a bus, a hotel ballroom, a bus, a locker room, and a football field. Get back on the plane. Or the parking lot in these guys' case. Sometimes you end up in the parking lot. We saw him doing walkthroughs in the parking lot yesterday. Mangum, a little bit low on the throw. And they got a long trip next week, you know, East Carolina. Yeah. You know, this is a team in BYU. They're going to be well-traveled. For a banged-up football team, you know, that just puts even more stress. They're going to end up jumping two time zones, so they'll leave on a Thursday. And just the tr just the, the physical training room aspect of getting guys healthy is compromised a little bit. Right. I mean, you've got especially guys that are kind of on the cusp of getting back in there. You want to see, you want to continue to evaluate them. You don't want them to feel remote from the team. So they make the trip, but you're away from your training room, your training facilities. Not the easiest circumstance. Donald Gray will make the fair catch at the 45-yard line, a 38-yard punt, and a 35-10 game here. Getting late in the fourth quarter. We'll step aside back in a moment. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. Big night at the hump last night. The men's and women's basketball teams. A little maroon madness. Three-point shooting. Xavier Stapleton. Xavier Stapleton, boy, he is a high flyer. Won the dunk contest. Good crowd on hand. Basketball season. Practice underway. Season starts middle of November. And we have a new quarterback. Keaton Thompson, the freshman out of New Orleans, and they are high on this guy. They think he has the entire skill set to be an outstanding quarterback down the road. Louisiana Gatorade Player of the Year last year, three-time state champ, one in football, two in basketball. You kind of wonder if you're getting a glimpse of uh, the next version of Nick Fitzgerald. We did a game here a couple years ago, Prescott. Still the quarterback spot facing Northwestern State, I believe it was. And Fitzgerald comes in there and puts together a couple of nice plays. What a nice day for Nicky Fitz. Week number seven, 19 to 30 passing. And another big day on the ground. A nice chat with Nick Fitzgerald yesterday. We have a bunch of common denominators, friends. Catching up on Little League football stuff. I'm sure everybody on, on our crew enjoyed that conversation between Nick I and I, right? I found it riveting, <laughs> yeah. Nick's got an uncle who used to play defensive back at the University of Georgia with a big game later on tonight versus Missouri. Loss of a yard. Jesse Jackson on the reception. 
four-star quarterback, number one high school QB in the state of Louisiana. Almost 4,000 yards passing, 46 touchdowns, had 1,400 yards rushing, 26 more touchdowns there. I mean, you look at the numbers, and he is the guy that fits Dan Mullen's offense. Yeah, yeah I mean, when you're looking at a skill set from a productivity standpoint, he checks most, if not all, of those boxes. End over end kick by Cook. Shelton will let this one hit into the end zone. They're going to say touchback. Three forty to go. We'll step aside. Back in a moment. Shocking to see Cowbells here, at Davis Wade Stadium. <laughs> We've got them up in the booth. Let's check out today's All Hands in Play, brought to you by Allstate. And. We've seen some nice runs today out of the backfield by the combination of tailbacks, including the quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. Yeah, it's been the full complement. And not always are they handing it off. Harris Williams, though, Nick Gibson, and then Kylan Hill, the new face among them. And you can see why there's a great deal of excitement. Joe Critchlow gets in the game. Another young face for BYU. I guess he saw enough from Tanner Mangum in this one as this game's well in hand for Mississippi State. Critchlow got a couple of snaps at the end of last week's game against Boise State. True freshman. Out of Nashville, put up some great numbers as a high school quarterback, but once some schools realized that he was going on a two-year mission, they kind of backed off him. Decided to sign with Southern Utah and went on his mission and came back. And Ed Lamb, who was the head coach at Southern Utah while he was on his mission, got the job as an assistant here with Kalani Sataki. And with that, Critchlow decides to come with Coach Lamb to BYU, and they're happy to have him. Matter of fact, they didn't even lay – Coach uh, Sataki didn't even see him in person until about three months ago. It really, it really was a curious circumstances. Kind of a circuitous route for Critchlow to end up in Provo. Third down. And that one is incomplete. Well, for this Mississippi State team, you start looking at their schedule stench, and there are some opportunities here for them yeah. to put together a, a pretty solid season now. You're not kidding. I, I mean, you look at the East Division, people thought maybe Kentucky a dark horse team and they have found ways to get victories they found ways to lose games as well the florida game sticks out most notably but you know they're in a bye week they get kentucky coming off a bye does mississippi state they've already had their toughest game out of that east division and then you look at the rest of it you know a and m also will be coming out of a bye that's the difficult part for the bulldogs the next two games both opponents will be coming off a bye week but you're building on a performance where a 34 first downs that's pretty dominating. Hey, they've run 80 plays. 34 of those plays picked up a first down. It's it's like we said, you know, I think it kind of goes back to, you know, we haven't seen a bunch of big plays downfield. We've seen some, especially in the passing game. But they've had so many possessions. They've been able to maintain possessions. They just pile up these first downs. Keaton Thompson, again, at quarterback. Dontavian Lee with the carry. He'll pick up three. Don't forget, coming up, 3.30 Eastern time, Vandy and Ole Miss from the Grove at Oxford, Vaught Hemingway Stadium, and then we're off to Sanford Stadium between the hedges as number four ranked Georgia will host Missouri on our SEC Saturday night game. You can catch those also streaming live on the ESPN app. Both Vandy and Ole Miss are on three-game losing streaks, both trying to pick up their first conference wins. Vanderbilt, they had a, a pretty tough run there, especially defensively. You face Alabama, then Florida, then Georgia. So they had an opportunity to win that game versus the Gators. That handoff to Dontavian Lee. Dontavian Lee, the ball carrier. Picks up five. A five-yard game, third and short. 
And for Mississippi State this year, you know, for a team that was picked to finish next to last in that West Division, you know, you're talking about a team I, I don't anticipate. They're not knocking down the door in the West Division from a championship standpoint. But this team, I think, is better than anybody anticipated. They ran into a buzzsaw for two weeks. By week came at an ideal time. They've got a chance to finish incredibly strong here in the back half of their season. Thompson will keep it himself, breaks a couple of tackles, has the first down at the 40. And you can just, uh, with one minute left, BYU thinking about getting back to Provo. And I don't know, I mean, if you're Kalani Sataki, you've already tried to keep this thing together as much as you can. This will be six consecutive defeats for BYU. It's just it's somewhat unprecedented, certainly in recent history from BYU's perspective. And, you know, Coach Sataki was pretty resolute that, you know, this team and their makeup, they can handle this, something that they can weather. But there's no doubt that a streak like this will certainly test the character of your football team. Meanwhile, Mississippi State will snap that two-game losing streak. They will go to four and two on the year. Meanwhile, BYU will drop to one and six. Nick Fitzgerald led the way. 241 yards passing, couple of touchdowns on the ground, had 103.